Hello there, girls and boys, and welcome back to the Inner Sanctum, the place where I show you all of my tricks while I pull them off live right in front of you. And yes, I know that we took a little bit longer than expected, but believe me that we are facing all sorts of interesting uh, developments at this very moment here at the Bardon camp. But wherever, as Quinn once said, uh, the show must go on, and this should be working now. And as you might have guessed from the title, Today we're going to be working on a mix, working and using Mixbus, Harrison Mixbus, which is a fantastic digital audio workstation, which mimics the workflow and the feel and the vibe and even the sound of a proper and actual mixing desk. To be specific, a Harrison mixing desk. So, with that being said, let's get into it. And hopefully you should be able to see at this very moment my uh, screen, which is... Uh, Guitar, electric guitar playing a, a smooth and awesome solo, may I say, and also bass guitar and our drum kit is comprised of only four channels. We got kick drum, snare, hi-hats and overheads. And this track... And this track, it's actually... Okay, let me see. Now it's now it's supposed to be working. Okay, sorry about that, girls and boys, but believe me, there we've been facing all sorts of issues right today, uh, messing around with this um, with this live stream setting. So I'm gonna go back again to the very beginning. So I was saying this: we got here our uh, arrangement, which is actually quite short. So I'm gonna do it once again, super quickly. We got here a Rhodes piano, electric piano, an organ, electric guitar playing a lead solo, a bass, and our drum kit is comprised of only four. Uh, elements. We got kick drum, snare, hi-hats and overheads and that's it. And the track itself it's kind of something, uh, it's kind of close to what the jazz fusion uh, movement uh, is, okay? So it's kind of like, uh, like uh, how can I put it, like mm, Brett Garst and stuff like that uh, when it comes to the sound. So with that being said, let's listen to it as this, at this very point, the very first time that we play back the track. And for that purpose, I'm gonna go back straight to my mixing environment, which is where we're gonna spend most of our time. So, here we're gonna, uh, just for sake of conversation, before we do that, we're gonna uh, keep our naming conventions correct. So, I'm gonna label my uh, sounds properly. We got organ and roads. That's it, perfect. Now, I'm gonna go back to my mixing desk and I'm gonna press play. So we can start listening to the music and we will be beginning with the uh, gain stage se se section of our mixing project. So here we go, first playback. We got a, a stupidly loud a mix all in all because all of the channels are quite high in volume. But the first thing that I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna go over there where I pointed my uh, cursor on and this is called auto return. 
which means that every time that we press the spacebar, it's gonna go back straight to the very point on which we decided to begin the playback. So I'm gonna I'm gonna select this guy to be here, right at the very beginning. So it it's quite 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 good and it's super super useful for this particular purpose. So now. Finally, we're going to start to mess around with everything. And the first thing that we're going to do is actually lower the volume of everything that it's not drums. Everything goes down one by one. We're done. And actually, this channel is my voice. You shouldn't be able to see it to, to, to look at it, but whatever. I'm going to rename it just for you to not be not getting confused. So this is voice over. Done. There it is. Good. Now, here we go, girls and boys. I'm gonna press play again, and we're gonna to start to work around with our. Uh, we're gonna work around our kick drum uh, because it's quite, quite, quite. It got lost into the midst of the whole mix. So here we go. Okay, not bad at all. And uh, I began by uh, first setting the, the volume for the kick drum here, girls and boys, because the kick drum is uh, usually, well, it's the foundation for most of what happens inside of a song. So by setting a, a volume uh, that I kind of liked, because I wasn't quite sure, because you also need to compare the sound of the kick drum with your bass. Um, I started to bring in the snare and I found that the snare is extremely low in volume when compared to the rest especially the overheads, the overheads are extremely loud as you can see I got little to no volume on them because they were actually quite 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 overbearingly loud and also the snare is gonna it required a good and healthy amount of compression because of how it sounds so with that being said let's continue now the next thing that I did was I brought in the Rhodes, our electric piano, little by little, because I wanted to keep the Rhodes as the main harmonic element. Then I added the organ, and the organ, even though it sounds amazing, it was, and it's supposed to be underneath the Rhodes, because the organ is just adding a layer in between the, the, the sound of the, of the Rhodes and the rest of the instrumentation. It's almost like the glue, okay? And as a final step, I brought in my electric guitar. So let's see what we can do with the, with the whole ensemble now that we got some form of order. I'm going to press play from the top. Here we go.
Now, let me show you this area over here, girls and boys. This is the Mixbox area of M Mixbox. And I know that it sounds like uh, like I repeated myself because I actually did, but I didn't. Let me explain why. The trick is this, girls and boys. This section, it's in mind that it's all about different scents, okay? And when you are mixing inside of a, of a mix of a mixing desk, and I will have to go here because this is important. When you're mixing inside of a mixing desk, you actually are are constrained by the amount of channels that that mixing desk has to offer. So sometimes you need to use groups or scents uh, as a way to control your mix in a much more uh, manageable manner. Okay, so. What I have here, it's actually a setup on which I have my instruments being sent to eight of my Mixbus channels. Some of those channels are actually uh, comes loaded with an EQ, a, a drive section, which is kind of distortion, and an extra layer of compression. So what I'm doing is, in mind that I, I, I'm mixing with, um, how can I put it, like scents, okay? Because technically, technically speaking, that's what I'm doing. I am sending, for example, let's go back to a mix bus so you can have a visual cue. I am using, for example, my, uh, my, my drums are divided in the following. Everything that it's not kick drum goes to my drums mix bus. That way I can compress, uh, apply a distortion and add an extra layer of EQ to the sum of all of the channels, okay? This is not an individual channel. This is actually uh, the sum of the snare, the hi-hats, and the overheads. And that way I can control them uh, in a different manner, okay? I, you will see how once we start uh, messing around with Mixbus. Then I got here my beloved and amazing kick slash bass uh, Mixbus. And as the name in tiles, this is actually the, the, the mix bus that I'm using to control and to send my, uh, my, my kick and my bass. So that way I can apply an extra layer of distortion and especially compression. So I can glue them together and control them outside of the mix, outside of the, uh, outside of the drums mix. Really good. Then the same could be said about guitars, keyboards, and of course uh, we got the special tricks over here. Let me let me just scroll a little bit over there. We got, of course, our uh, kiss, and then we got a a set of parallel mixing uh, sets. Okay, here we got a, a nasty a nasty compressor, which is kind of like super super over the top driven, as you can see. It's super over driven uh, sound, which I use as a way to bring and enhance certain elements of the mix. More on that later. Then I got already my uh, parallel compression drum uh, bus uh, ready to rock. And uh, then I got my snare compression and a vocals compressor or vocals uh, uh, parallel compressor ready to rock as well. And the final section of my mix bus is my sense for special effects, such as uh, two types of reverb and an extra reverb for my voice and an stereo delay and that's it girls and boys why am i doing it like that well it's because as i said before the whole point of mixing uh, in a mix but on a, on a mixing desk is the fact that you are comprised uh, compromised by uh, the amount of channels that you have access to that forces you to think and an approach to mixing in a different manner that's important that's good because actually it, this thing makes your whole workflow more straightforward believe it or not now with that being said it's time to rock and roll again so oh sorry one more thing here is how you control the sense okay it's basically just a series of knobs which tells you which send you can send your information to and also for those who are new to this concept the mix bus uh, works uh, exactly the same way as a mixing desk so you got this master button on every single one of your uh, channels so this is a very very important pro tip if you want to do the, the trick that I showed you, the thing about using mixing buses as a way to parallel compress or do all sorts of shenanigans, make sure that if you want to control the sound of your drums, for example, you got the master bus off because otherwise you're going to be getting twice the signal, okay? The this, this stuff being sent from the track and the stuff coming out of the mix bus, okay? 
they've been talking for way too long so let's give it a listen again so we can so that way we can decide where to begin here we go Okay, as usual, we're going to begin with our kick drum and I'm going to select the equalizer. So this is the equalizer uh, that it's contained and comes uh, built in with Mixbox, Mixbox. And for the record, we're going to be working only using what you saw, in, what you have in front of you. We're not going to be using any form of external plugin outside of reverb and delay and all sorts of time based effects. The rest, when it comes to equalization and dynamics, everything is coming out of the box. So, we're going to be dealing with this EQ, and this EQ, as simple as it looks, it's extremely powerful and super useful. We got our high, our highs, our mids, and our lows with both low cut and high cut. So first, let's listen to the kick drum because it's super, super low. Here we go. As usual, I'm gonna solo the track so I can have an idea of what kind of effect my equalizer is having on my on my kick drum. And right now, I am gonna leave it over there because uh, the plan is to start to clean up some of my uh, low ends, uh, especially the kick drum and the bass because the kick drum itself is already bassy. And now that we got that, let's see how it fares with the uh, bass guitar. I'm gonna solo kick and bass. Okay, also I detected that our bass was really, really loud when compared to the kick drum. I don't know if by leaving my filter there, we would, uh, we would get a, a, a great result. I'm going to back it off a tiny bit because I feel that we went a little bit too hard on it. Okay, not bad. Now, let's bring back the rest of the mix and I'm going to start to enhance the sound of our uh, bass bass drum so here we go i'm gonna work first on my a uh, highs because i need to, to first find and define our uh, our clickiness because it's not as pointy as i would like it to be so here we go Okay, not that bad. I think that that might be a good starting point. Let me see. We are dealing with a uh, 3.30, uh, yeah, 3,420 3, hertz. I am not surprised at all. So let's go. Let's set this up once again to Unity, and I'm gonna press play, and we're gonna start to bring the rest. Of, we're gonna do it with the rest of the mix, and we're gonna start to enhance that particular frequency. Here. We Okay, not bad at all. Now let's make the sound of our kick drum a little bit fatter. So we're gonna do the same. We're gonna go over here, some boys. We're gonna crank up the the gain, and then we're gonna mess around. We're gonna sweep around the frequency range, trying to find the right frequency. So I'm gonna do it first solo, so that way I can have an intelligent and uh, I can make an intelligent decision decision based on what I heard. Then I'm gonna uh, go back. 
remove the solo button and I'm gonna apply to taste. Here we go. Okay, I think that's an actual winner. So I'm gonna, as I said before, uh, remove the solo button and I'm gonna press play again and I'm gonna start to add uh, energy to that frequency little by little. Here we Okay, now I feel like there is some form of honkiness on my kick, so I'm going to do the same. This is an actually really good trick, girls and boys, trying to find uh, the right frequencies before you start to mess around with them, with them. because what something that happened, that happened to me when I was uh, still a beginner, I just went full on onto my equalizers without even knowing where to start to work uh, on to begin with. So I usually uh, was trying to follow the rule of thumb, uh, and I never get I never get really good results, or somebody to be quite frank with you, because uh, I was just using what they told me to do or what uh, uh, any book had told me to do. So uh, once I stop uh, following uh, the book and I start using my uh, hearing. Everything changed. So we're going to do the same here, girls and boys. We're going to press play again. I already cranked up our gain, and we're going to fear try to find where our most pro that, that problematic frequency is on our kick drum. Let's see. Here we go. That one is awful. So that might be the guy to kill. So here we go. I'm gonna press play again and I'm gonna lower that frequency, okay? Here what a difference, isn't it? Let's go a little bit further uh, in time just for you to have an idea. And I'm gonna be uh, bringing in and out the equalizer because the result was outstanding. Here we go, first without. Fantastic, isn't it? And look, we barely did anything on it. We only applied a little bit of high end, so we added uh, more definition to the kick. Then we made it fatter by enhancing a little bit of the low end. Then we removed some of the mid lows, which are usually quite problematic. And we, that was actually the magic trick because we removed that, that kind of, how am I gonna put it? We remove that uh, boxy sound uh, from the kick. Now it works amazingly well with the bass, even though the bass it's still full of problems. We already uh, we're already dealing with a really a really good sound and kick drum. Now let's apply a little bit of. Um, we should wait. Let me see first then our kick drum, our bass guitar, because uh, before we apply compression, I gotta I gotta carve some room for the uh, kick to keep uh, cutting through the mix and the only way to do it is by first removing some of the stuff that it's uh, masquerading that kick on our bass so again 
we're gonna uh, first um i might work first on my low end low end because don't know why but i usually like to deal with that uh, with my basses probably because we're dealing with the low end uh sound so here we go we're gonna do the same i'm gonna uh, uh solo the bass and probably i'm gonna use this instead of having a shelving uh, shape on our uh, band we're gonna be dealing with a picking one so we're gonna be more precise on the way that we apply the the, the EQ here we go okay I I am gonna back down and I'm gonna decide to use uh, the shelving. So I remove that guy because you saw as soon as I remove it, we got a fatter sounding bass. So I'm gonna uh, get rid of the solo and we're gonna start to enhance the low end on our bass. Here we go. I like the low end, but there is again some form of nasal sound coming from our bass and also it's uh, kind of boxing. So we're gonna keep working on it. We're gonna go straight to the mid lows because that's where actually the problems lies. I'm gonna crank up the, again and we're gonna do the, the usual suspect or something. We're gonna try to figure out where our problematic mix, uh, our problematic band is. Here we go. It's that one. So, again, without, uh, with the rest of the mix, and we're gonna start to remove that vent little by little. But I feel that I will go nuts on it. Here we go. Now I feel that my mids are a little bit lackluster, our uh, high mids. I think there is something honky as well, so on the bass. So I'm gonna solo the bass again and let's do the same. That vent is awful, but I don't know if you heard this guy somewhere around four and five. We got an actually cool sounding and vibey uh, 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 frequency range. So I'm gonna remove this guy, and then using our highs, we're gonna enhance that band. I don't. I'm not gonna go the hard on this guy. So here we go. bad at all don't you think look let me explain what happened here then first i l went there and looked for that honky sounding frequency which was actually ruining and cramming my style but once i detect that way and removed it i felt that my bass requires a good chunk of high end because my uh, definition was basically lost as soon as i cleaned up the mess so as you can see i actually went a little bit hard on the amount of energy being enhanced by that particular band on my equalizer but it works wonders we are actually getting a fatter sounding yet self-contained and it's starting to sound good together 
even though we haven't touched any form of compressor. So, now, speaking of which, we're going to head back to our kick drum. Okay, girls and boys? And over here, we are going to uh, apply compression to our kick. Here we go. And the way to go is by doing the following. Mixbus, each channel strip comes with not only our uh, EQ, it also comes with a compression circuit which has three different flavors, which are quite, quite nice, and each of them have a different, uh, different, different, dif different Genesis Quad to offer. So, let's give it a shot first to the leveler, because that guy actually allows us to control the speed on which we, we have our compression taking place. So, I'm going to apply a gentle amount, because this is how you control the threshold. And we got an actual visual cue over here, which is cool. I'm going to solo then my kick drum, okay? And we're going to start to deal with the compressor. Here we go. Okay, I think I like what I'm hearing, so let me explain what happened before I press play and see if this works. You'll see. This is how you control and bypass the, the compressor, nothing interesting. This is the threshold. And with the threshold, uh, I tell the compressor how, how well, I, this is how I set the amount of information and energy being sent into our, uh, into our compressor, which in return is going to react accordingly according to the amount of uh, information being set in, sent into it, okay? Then, here we got our attack uh, knob, which allow us to control how fast do we want our compressor to uh, be uh, to engage. And look, w since my plan for this compressor is to bring more of the attack of the, of the kick drum, the transient, to push it harder and make it uh, feel louder, the way to go is by actually having a slow attack, which means that it's going to let most of our uh, kick to, to cut through it without engaging the compression and the compression is going to be applied after the the attack of the of the of the base of the kick drum it's it's gone that way we are going to start to add uh, that loud punchiness without destroying the dynamics of our drums actually we're enhancing them hopefully you got it now let's see if this actually worked from the top girls and boys Nice, 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 nice. I like it. Now, let's do the same on our base. Because our base, it's kind of... How can I put it? Because I was the one recording the base and the one performing. It's kind of lackluster, to be quite frank with you. So, I need to uh, correct some of my uh, messed up dynamics. So, let's go back to our edit window and let's select, let's select an area in which the base is basically playing the whole time. It's here. Good. We're going to start from there. And I'm going to select our bass and solo, because it's a good practice to work with compressors uh, solo. For you to have a, a proper idea of how hard you are hitting the compressor, and for you to see if actually you're doing something that is bringing some, something of use for, uh, for the mix or not, before you even come back with the rest of the mix and compare your, your sound. Remember, I always tell you not to mix with your eyes, uh, which means not to mix with solo button, because the whole point of that is just for you to pinpoint exactly what you're doing, then bring back the rest of the mix and mix this track inside of the boundaries of the mix. Totally makes sense. So here we go. First, we're going to see what kind of effect our compressor is going to have on our bass, and then we're going to set it to taste while listening to the whole track. Here we go. And actually, for the record, let's see if we can change the compressor circuit to a different setting. We're gonna... Uh, no, we're gonna keep using the leveler because I wanna use a super fast attack. 
because I want to uh, control my attack, my dynamic range. Here we go. Okay, that sounds like it could work. So, one more thing that I forgot to tell you. This gain, it's actually the makeup gain. It's this, that thing allows us to control, uh, to uh, bring back some of the loss of volume once the compression is engaged, okay? And this guy over here, the trim, actually, it's allowing us to control how hard and how loud the compressor is going to be hit by the signal. We can actually send more or uh, we can make the, the, the signal louder or remove some of the volume of the signal before it hits the compressor. Useful as well. So now let's see how it sounds like with the rest of the mix. Like it, like it. Now let's go over here to our kick and drums because I'm gonna apply a little bit of compression over there as well because I want to make them to make them tighter. Okay, I want to control the dynamic of our kick and bass even more without destroying the, the the dynamic range, of course. And also, I'm gonna add a little bit of drive because by applying distortion, we can enhance the sound and give that sense of compression and saturation which actually makes the sound a little bit more uh, interesting and pleasing to the ears. So here we go. First I'm gonna work with my uh, drive and then I might apply a little bit of EQ as well. So here we go. Okay, I just apply a gentle amount of uh, EQ just to bring more of the of that low end to the forefront. There is still some information in the mid range that I don't like, to be quite frank with you. Uh, but we will deal with that probably uh, once we got most of the elements uh, in our mix uh, uh, added to the rest of the whole thing, right? introduced now uh, also i added a little bit of uh, highs just to enhance a little bit of the uh, the detail especially on the, on the click on the kick drum then i went berserk on my uh, drive as you can see why because the drive was actually adding greediness to the bass which made it sound better to my ears now it's time to hit the compressor and actually this might be the moment in which i will change the compressor to a different setting so yes we're going to use this compressor instead of leveler which actually allows us to control the ratio instead of using a fixed ratio we're going to go a little bit hard on it for the three on three and here we go remember we're, we're actually working on our kick and bass we're going to try to make them a little bit tighter here we go nice <laughs> it's quite beefy quite quite beefy and in general it's, it's starting to sound together we got actually a cool sounding a kick and bass uh, relationship 
I'm quite surprised and I am quite happy with the results. Let me see. We're almost close to the end. So let's let's work with the rest of the mix uh, and let's compare what kind of sound we got already. Because I think that before uh, we put it into this uh, live stream, I'm going to work at least on the low end on these two guys, the organ and the Rhodes piano. Because those guys are actually bringing some of that mod as well to the rest of the mix. Here we go! Nice, isn't it? <laughs> Look, this is what it did. I first dealt with my uh, my organ, sorry, my Rhodes piano, because that's actually the, the major uh, instrument uh, when it comes to the Rhodes and the organ. That's the one that I want to be the protagonist of this track uh, when it comes to harmony. So I first found uh, a proper uh, volume, a proper gain stage for it, uh, on top of what we already did, of course. Then I started to remove some of the low end. You saw how as soon as I pushed it hard enough, we lost most of the information coming over the roads, roads because it's not playing on the higher spectrum of the, of, the, of the frequency range. Still, I backed it off little by little until I found a space on which it was not fighting for space with the kick and the bass. Good. Then I did the same. I went to my organ and I started to look for the sweet spot volume wise now that we got this uh, solid foundation when it comes to kick and bass drum also the kick and bass sorry also once i did that i head towards my low end frequency and i removed i clean up once again a good chunk of that uh, frequency range the low frequencies because they were masquerading some of the information coming out of the kick and the bass again so now that that worked we are gonna see if we have time to actually apply some reverb and we will because it's extremely important we're gonna apply some reverb to our uh, drums okay there are two ways to do it we can do it on an individual basis over here goes some boys track per track track by track sorry or we can go over here to our mix bosses and as you can see we got the same uh, scent uh, feature so we can actually uh, send information from both of the different options. Here's the catch. If we send it from our mix bus, it's going to be post EQ and processing, which might not be what you want to do because you're going to apply a distortion. We're going to add an extra layer of equal equalization. And since you're dealing with a group of instruments, that might not be the best way to go. Sometimes it would. For example, when dealing with electric guitars, electric guitars would be fantastic because you're just going to send a good chunk of uh, uh, the, the stereo field. But in this case, it won't because some instruments, some sections of the, of the of the drums might need more or less effect. So now that we, we discuss that, let's bring that on. First, let's look for a, a, a reverb. Let's find our reverb. Um, here is a reverb. Um, um, what's the name? Our reverb. Oh, Jesus, Murphy. Ah, our reverb <laughs> channel strip. Sorry. Then let's look for a particular reverb. Let's see. Uh, which reverb to use? Let's try something cool, something good, and something that you usually don't see me using. Yeah, where is it? Arturia. Yeah. And let's give a shot to this guy. Hopefully, it would work. It did work, but actually it's a plate reverb. So I'm going to change it. I'm going to move it over here. There it is. 
and this guy I'm gonna change it as well because uh, I don't need that guy we need a whole reverb so I'm gonna go to slate digital and we're gonna use the verbs with classics that's an actually really good reverb unit so here it is let's first remove the plate that we inserted wrongly there is gone so here we go girls and boys and yeah let's leave it as it is and he, this is what we'll be doing girls and boys we are gonna first deal with our hole uh, we're gonna select from our uh, uh, selection of, of reverbs we're gonna look for the one that works the best let's give it a shot to something like mm, concert hall and let's see how it works I'm gonna close the reverb unit and we're gonna start to send reverb to uh, we are gonna start sending information to our reverb uh, uh, send okay here we go we're gonna begin with our drum kit our sorry our uh, top snare here we go That was fantastic! <laughs> that reverb is awesome! Let me take a look in. This is the, yeah, large concert hall. It just worked! I am impressed. Let's just remove a little bit of low end on the EQ, on the, on the EQ of our verb suite classics on a reverb and throw a little, add a little bit of modulation. And let's see how it sounds like. You know what? I'm gonna send a tiny bit of the kick drum as well because it feels a little bit out of place. Really good, really, really good. Now let's mess around with our play, plate reverb. Here we go, girls and boys. This is uh, gonna be interesting because this guy is actually quite simple, but I'm gonna apply, a, uh, it comes with a drive a module, which you know that I love my distortion. And we actually got three different sounds. So we got a uh, punchy, classic and modern. So let's give a shot first to punchy because we want something punchy and extremely important. Super, super, super important, girls and boys. Give me a second. Make sure that since we're dealing with an auxiliary scent, the wet blend knob, it's all the way to wet, okay? And we got here on our uh, advanced settings, I'm gonna apply a little bit of uh, high pass filter as well. And um, let's add that some modulation, pre, yeah, pre and yeah just keep it like it is and we're gonna start to send information to it we're gonna bring you the hours there here we go like it but I feel that it's a little bit too long mm, let me see probably probably a different model and a little bit less decay time here we go again
Not bad, not bad at all. Let's see how it sounds with the rest. Not bad, not bad girls and boys. Let's give it a try to the kick drum again as a final step in this journey. We're gonna add some plate reverb to our kick. Here we go, from the top. And this is gonna be super gentle girls and boys because if you add too much uh, reverb, and I usually don't add reverb to my kicks, but uh, given the vibe and the feel and the sound of this track, I think that it works and it adds a little bit of the renowned Genesis Equa. So here we go, little by little. So there you have it, girls and boys. We are getting to the end of this live stream. Look, we actually am, am, amassed, uh, we actually ship a good chunk of uh, the workload today. We finally established a really good foundation for a track. We're talking about the low end and the relationship between the kick drum and, this, and, the, and the bass guitar. Really, really good. They're working in tandem, but there are plenty of issues still with the track. For example, uh, that final uh, playback, the sound of our cymbals are is extremely extremely harsh they are quite 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 loud they are kind of distorting in a way and it's uh, not good at all then when i brought back the electric guitar the lead sound it, it feels quite quite outside of what it's supposed to be doing it's not not there yet it feels that it doesn't belong to that mix there are many reasons why but we will deal with those later and our organ and roads since we haven't applied any form of uh, dynamic uh, processing and especially the EQ is still not uh, been touched, we are uh, experiencing this kind of, uh, again, they feel that they don't belong to a track. They, are, they still feel that this track is not glued together. Another problem. Our main objective uh, today was to actually achieve a good sounding uh, low end foundation, which we actually achieved. So, with that being said, uh, I hope that you learned something out of this uh, whole experience. And if you got any question, let me know in the comments down below, now that this live stream is about to end. But before we go, I would like to invite you to subscribe to this channel. And also, if you like to support this channel even further, the best way to do it is by listening to music on Apple Music or Spotify. Also, by following us on Instagram, with will be effective, super, super effective, sorry, because that's the best way for you to get in touch with us in a much more personal basis.